Thank you everyone for attending this morning. Uh, we want to tell you we appreciate you getting up. Uh, at least the, the weather was nice. I mean, don't you like this um, you know, warm, comfortable you know, February weather? You know, um, I heard uh, one of the weathercasters, Delcas from Channel 8 the other um, morning, he said, you could tell we had a lot of new people moving in the Dallas-Fort Worth area when somebody told him, well, you know, this, this is not bad. This is really great. You know, I, I think this is, this is like summertime. And he said, I went, no, no, you haven't been here long enough. You know what summertime is. And he said, that's how you can tell the newbies, you know, because they don't know. Um, thank you again so much. We really appreciate it. We hope you enjoyed this morning's presentation. As most of you know, we do these throughout the spring and then through the fall, and we try and bring relevant topics that we think are in the news and things that you want to hear about. Um, I don't think there's a day goes by that the Wall Street Journal, the Dallas Morning News, you know, somewhere Fox News isn't talking about cybersecurity, some kind of hack, something that's going on. Um, as I was telling somebody this morning, we experienced this a couple months ago ourselves. Everything works really well till the morning you try and use it and it doesn't work anymore. Or till the morning you realize you have a problem. And that's where you really figure out who you got around you and what's going on. Um, some of the handouts in front of you this morning are there's a contact sheet in there for preferred technology solutions. We want to make sure you have their information. So if coming out of today you'd like to reach out, talk to them, you know, feel free to do that. Uh, we try and respect you know, the, the fact that we don't give out your contact information to everybody, we want to make sure you do it the other direction so that you had that and you had what you needed. Um, there's also, if you need CPE credit, uh, there's an evaluation form in there. If you'll fill that out and give it back to us and give it to Andrea on the desk on the way out, we'll make sure that you get the appropriate certificates and stuff for that and so that you get credit for your time. Um, there's also a speaker evaluation form. We're always curious about you know, what you think about the program, uh, the setting, the room, you know, everything, as well as we're always looking for topics. Um, we have uh, somebody coming next month to talk about leadership that just wrote a, a new book that he's going to hand out and stuff and talk about some new specific things going on, you know, with dealing both with our age group and stuff, but also millennials and other people coming up, new interns, all these different people that are coming into the workforce. Um, we're now outnumbered. There's more millennials than there are us. And so, you know, it's, it's uh, kind of like being married. You need to learn how to figure out how to deal with it or it's not going to last long. Okay. Uh, so we're, we're looking forward to that. We also have Congruent coming in to talk about alternative debt structures in the next month. So we're trying to find some different topics and stuff that we think would be helpful. We're beginning to see companies growing and in need of capital and stuff. Um, also, just a reminder, if you're interested in seeing past presentations, they are on our website. There's a video vault there. We've tried to break the presentations, even like today, down into pieces so that you don't have to look and listen to a whole 30, 45 minute to an hour presentation. You can listen to pieces of it and find what you're looking for. So feel free to take advantage of that and avail yourself. They're sitting out there for your use. Um, also, if you feel like you want to show those to somebody else or use them in something you're doing, let us know. We're more than glad to, to make that kind of stuff available for you. Um, this morning, we'd like to welcome David Hodges, who's from Preferred Technology Solutions. He's going to speak on the current topics of data and cybersecurity. He's going to talk about the basics of data and cybersecurity, as well as talk about the recent history of breaches, as well as the current events happening in the technology world. Uh, he's going to conclude by also giving you some guidance on how to protect your company, clients, and families from all the predators and the people. You know, I laugh and tell clients nowadays that we used to be worried about people coming in the front door and breaking in. Now that's not the case. Now they come in through the Wi-Fi and the wires. And so we've, we've got to be more careful than anything else. Can't tell you how many of the identity theft issues and how many letters we get even from the IRS with regard to identity theft and refunds stolen, client social security numbers stolen. So, you know, if we haven't already got you worried, by the time this is over, you won't be able to sleep, okay? So you need to call it. So we thank you this morning. We appreciate the time. Thank you, Greg. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is David Hodges. I work for Preferred Technology Solutions. I basically came up as an engineer by trade and someone a while back decided I was much better at talking to people than sitting in a dark room programming computers and I happen to enjoy that a lot too. 
So a lot of the experience I'm bringing to the table is stuff that I've seen from sitting behind the computer desk and managing a network and watching what's going on in and out of networks and things like that. And we've translated that into a pretty involved package for the security offerings that we do. So like Greg said, what we're going to cover today, what is cybersecurity? I like to say data and cybersecurity. Cyber is kind of, you know, the kitschy word. It's really about data security. We're going to talk about what's going on in the world today, who this is happening to, where the heck these threats are coming from, why should we be concerned, us here in the room, us, our families, why should we be concerned about this? And I'm going to end up with how some solutions on how you can protect your company, your clients, your family, and of course yourself. So this is what they call the clinical definition of cybersecurity. Pretty dry, basically tells us what it's, what it's all about. And it says it's the main priority for organizations of every size and genre, which is absolutely true. But what I want to get in your mind is data security is not a product. You can't go out and buy a package that has data security in it, open up the package, and you're secure. It's a practice, much like an attorney, doctor. It's an ongoing evolution of things. It's a practice. It's also not in point in time. You're not going to walk into your data center, walk up to your computer, and go, man, I'm secure. It's a journey. Data security, I would say, in fact, is a discipline. So what is happening out there? I'm sure everybody in this room watches the news, or reads the newspaper, some periodicals. There's been a lot of stuff that has happened. 2012, why did I start with 2012? Not because it hasn't been going on since the advent of the internet, but in 2012, the media took notice of it. Lots of things started to be reported on. 267 million records were exposed. These were individual accounts, passwords, email addresses were hacked. The business sector was more than half of this breach, these breaches. Later that year, LinkedIn discovered that there were 117 million LinkedIn accounts for sale on the internet. Somebody hacked LinkedIn and got all their user accounts and put them up for sale. Incidentally, I heard this statistic that up to 20%, this is today, up to 20% of LinkedIn accounts are fake. So business people out there, you get somebody that sends you a LinkedIn request, you might want to do a little research and make sure that that's not a fake account just trying to get your contacts, just FYI. 2013, 614 major breaches occurred, 30% more than the year before. 800 million records lost. I notate healthcare here because this is now almost half of the breaches in 2013. Healthcare is really being slammed this year. And insider theft soared. 2014 was so bad, we called it the year of the hack. A billion records were compromised, 78% increase from the previous year. In fact, Reuters told us the bad guys are winning. Bad guys are winning this battle. Our, in the infinite wisdom of our government, they decided to launch the Cyber Threat Intelligence Center, try and get a handle on what's going on in this global field of battle. What can we do to help stop it? So the next year, confirmed hacking incidents reached a nine-year high, 1,673 major breaches. And by the way, we define major breaches as at least 20,000 records. So you can do the math on that. So that's at least 20,000 records were stolen in a major breach. And these are the ones that were reported. Up again, of course, over the year before. And employee negligence doubles since 2012. So we're seeing all of this terrible thing. All this stuff is happening, but people are not getting it. They're not protecting themselves, they're not being educated, not paying attention. And obviously our, our government is really helping out here. Government data breaches, 476% increase in that. So what happened last year? Not really anything I can think of happened last year. It's a pretty slow year for cybersecurity. <laughs> Seriously though, um, wanted to remind myself to tell this story. <coughs> this past year, I had the great pleasure of sitting 
through a talk given by retired Admiral Walsh, four-star Admiral. This guy was an excellent speaker, obviously had highly classified information, which he didn't divulge, of course. He's retired now. But he told us a little bit about a breach that happened for the Department of Labor. Bunch of records were compromised, and it was actually a ransomware attack. Rather than pay the ransom, which even smaller companies would pay the ransom, they've of course got the government involved, the FBI, the NSA. They tracked the source of the breach back to the Philippines, and somebody in the Philippines that had all these records were shipping them. Now, these are records of employees of the government, right? Names, addresses, social securities, phone numbers. This guy in the Philippines, some paramilitary guy, was shipping this data to Aleppo. And they were planning individual attacks on 100 Americans that work for the government. Bomb them, blow them up, all this kind of stuff. So cybersecurity, data security has a real effect, not just on our pocketbooks, but it can be a life and death situation. Well, what about this year? What about 2017? Ransomware. I'm sure everybody in this room has heard of ransomware by now. Forbes told us last year that the first quarter, actually about this time last year, up to 100,000 computers a day were being hit with some form of the crypto locker. They wanted about $20 in Bitcoin. If you don't know what Bitcoin is, it's an anonymous form of payment. <clears throat> they actually have ATM Bitcoins now. They're untraceable, so that's the preferred method to pay a bad guy. The FBI also told us that payments started at $25 million, they're up to $200 million just in the first quarter of last year. I looked this up actually yesterday at, when I was doing this slideshow presentation. I said estimates of over a billion. They said, yeah, it was definitely a billion dollars, and probably that's conservative for the close of 2016. Billion dollars in ransomware. So CSO Online tells us, obviously, ransomware is going to continue to gain ground over traditional viruses, trojans, banking worms, things like that. Viruses, by the way, are old news. We've been talking about viruses for a long time. Ransomware is very hard to detect, and it is the newest weapon of choice. And we're all so connected to everything. Wearables, you know, anybody have a Fitbit or an iWatch? There's really no security built into that. Most of the Internet of Things that we buy has very little to no security built in. All right, let's talk for a couple of minutes on who are some notable victims. I'm sure that you guys will recognize some of these people or companies. Target, of course. 70 million credit cards stolen. This is an interesting story. So back in the day, Target made it very easy to be a vendor of theirs. In fact, they published on the internet how to become a vendor of Target's. Log into this portal, set up your customer information, get a connection into our network, deliveries, yada yada. Well, hackers found a company in New Jersey, an HVAC company that handled the refrigerating, refrigeration, heating, Refer, you know, all that kind of stuff, and sent them a phishing email, which we will talk about phishing. I'm going to say that a lot. We'll talk about it further. Somebody opened up a phishing email. Bad guys got access into the network. Nobody knew anything about it. Slowly and methodically, they elevated their permissions. And this company had a VPN connection into Target's network. So they were right on Target's network as soon as they took over this company in New Jersey. From there, it was a piece of cake started recording every credit card transaction that went across that network, uploaded it at their leisure. I put a little note right here that this is after, this is before the insurance cover. Insurance covered about 160 million of these losses, but the total cost is about a quarter billion dollars target lost. Home Depot, 56 million credit cards, debit cards. This was kind of interesting because the bad guys saw that the cash registers had random naming schemes. So it was really, you know, when you're on a, a network, you can say Ryan's PC. Okay, well, that's Ryan's PC. That's Greg's laptop. Well, Home Depot named all their credit or their registers, their cash registers, weird random names. The bad guys didn't know. All of their self checkout systems had, as an example, self checkout system 101. They targeted 7,500 of them, recorded all the customer transactions, and uploaded them again at their leisure without anyone being the wiser. 
$232 million. And some are saying that it's going to be close to a billion by the time all the lawsuits are settled from the creditors, the payment card folks that have to reimburse customers and so forth. J.P. Morgan Chase, 76 million households, 7 million small businesses. This one really, to me, smelled like an inside job. And the reason is, somehow the bad guys got a list of every single application running on everyone's computer. Now, there's only two ways to really do that. There's, you hire us, and we audit your network. We run tools that tell us what's running on your network. Or somebody gives you a list of everything that's installed on their computers. Well, from there, it's a piece of cake. You just cross-check each one of these programs with vul known vulnerabilities, and then you exploit those vulnerabilities. So this was names, address, phone numbers. This is a lot more sensitive data than just credit cards. This is, they took enough to impersonate somebody's identity. Sony Pictures Entertainment. Anybody remember this? Reason why I talk about Sony here is this was one of the first highly, highly publicized what they call hacktivist vigilantism. They took, and we know now, by the way, this was North Korea that did this. There was a movie coming out by some Hollywood comedians. This group may not remember that or care about it, but there was a funny comedy that was going to make fun of Kim Jong-un. Well, they found out about it, and boy, they did not want their esteemed leader being made fun of in a Hollywood film. So they hacked into Sony, took a terabyte of private emails. These are actors, actresses, salaries. You imagine how demoralizing this is to look, man, that jerk across the cubicle makes that much money? Very demoralizing. And it ended up actually preventing the release of that movie. Really, Sony took a big hit. Ashley Madison. Why do I bring up Ashley Madison? Not because I'm a client, certainly not. <laughs> but again, hacktivist vigilantism, it's a big word. This was a very popular target, obvious reasons, but also because their customers were promised a level of security and privacy. 32 million of those accounts were published to the internet to be searched. In fact, there was a guy whose wife found out he was cheating on him, killed himself. So the methods, we don't really know how they do this, but they were bragging that it was easy. Security was lax, it was easy to get in and do it. And I notate this one in Sony because as business owners, sooner or later, something might happen to where you become a target because of your views, either political or social. You might endorse a charity that somebody doesn't like or whatever, and that could potentially make you a target for hacktivists. And the more damage they can cause, the happier they are. United States voter reg registration. This happened in 2015. There was a gentleman sitting in his basement, or on his, his home office, private security researcher in Austin, Texas, found a humongous database sitting out there on the internet with our information, our registered voter information, just for anybody to take a look at what party we're voting for and so forth. 191 million voters. They don't know, actually, we still don't know who the owner of that database was. The feds are investigating to this day, but, you know, you can probably guess which country had something to do with that from my previous slide. Yahoo. Anybody here a Yahoo customer? Myself and my parents, we've been SBC Global since... Before, it was airmail.net in Dallas years ago, and then SBC Bottom, and then Yahoo, and now AT&T owns all that conglomerate. So this is actually way more than 500 million. I heard something on the term, we like to throw billion around, but truly, they think there's about a billion AT&T, Yahoo, SBC Global, all the umbrella floating around out there. Happened in 2014, finally they reported it. And this, again, was a nation-state-sponsored attack that did this. So you've seen a lot of big businesses. Obviously, big businesses are targeted. All businesses are targeted. Here's a couple examples that people are probably familiar with. Genghis Grill. Love that place. 55,000 of their credit card transactions were impacted. CC's Pizza. I'm sure everybody in this room knows who CC's Pizza is. They're local. 50 different locations. Of course, the Omni Hotel, beautiful Omni Hotel down, downtown Dallas. They had... You know, almost 50 of their other locations hit. So it's business of all sizes, not just the big guys. All of us are targets. 
fact, the Wall Street Journal tells us every major company has been hacked. Gartner goes on to tell us that it's about half a trillion dollars annually global losses from cybercrime.